If you've been trying to grow your glutes for what seems like forever, but you haven't seen much success, this video is for you. I'm going to break down the three most common reasons why people struggle to grow their glutes and see the results that they think they should be getting. We're going to start though with the preface of that people tend to have different genetic biases for different muscle groups. So some people are really good at growing their pecs. Some people are really good at growing their hamstrings. And there's no real way to really measure what you're going to be genetically gifted at other than just working out and seeing what happens. So there are certain limitations some people have genetically, but that doesn't mean we still can't see results. One very common reason people struggle to get their glutes to grow is because they aren't leveraging them effectively or they're just not able to leverage them effectively. What I mean by that is we know that in order for a muscle to fully contract, it has to come from a position of relative lengthening. So the glutes are going to do two main things. They're going to close this space when they contract and they're also going to help extend the hip. As I've mentioned in plenty of other content, a lot of people have this issue with this forward pelvis. And if this pelvis gets pushed more and more forward over time, in order for us to prevent ourselves from feeling like we're going too far forward, what often happens is the glutes grit back here to help pull the pelvis and center of mass back and that can result in a lot of compression back here. A lot of people have compression of the back of their pelvis right here in this lower region. And to a lot of people, it feels like their glutes are always clenched or they can't really feel them work at all when they're doing an exercise. What we can do before we work out though is we can do something to help open up this space. And many times I've seen people open up this space with an exercise like I'm about to show you, and then they have an easier time going through exercises where they need to use their glutes. They're not only able to feel them better, but more importantly, importantly, they're able to go through the joint actions necessary to go from internal rotation to external rotation and from hip flexion to hip extension. So we have most of the weight on the left side here and the whole foot is flat, but mostly on the heel in terms of the weight distribution on the left foot and the right foot, midfoot is in line with the left toes. And then the hands are just here. So what we're going to do to start is we're going to just inhale, Exhale around our back a little bit. And now we need to feel the foot pressures of the left heel still, but about 25% of our weight is on our right foot arch right here. And then we're gonna use that right foot arch to sort of push the right knee slightly forward and the left knee slightly in. So she's gonna feel her left inner thigh. You got that? Mm -hmm. Good, okay. Now keeping a little rounding in her back, she's going to put her forearms on this thing right here where that's a table. We have a box, whatever is about waist height. And then she is going to feel a stretch in her back left hip that's pretty significant, right around that posterior hip capsule in here. And all she's gonna do in this position is make sure that she's staying heavy on her left heel, but the whole left foot is flat. The right knee is going slightly forward, left knee is going slightly in, and then she's gonna breathe in through her nose, out through her mouth for about five breaths. Some people, about 20 to 25% of people, are gonna benefit more from a slightly different variation of this, where they actually arch their back a little bit, but really what that's gonna do is just make the spine a little bit more flat, so they can get deeper into that hip and open up the back of their hip a little bit more. So if that's you, experiment around with it, see which one works better, which one you feel more opening of your back hip in, and just make sure all the cues are still the same. So you're gonna be leaning on that back heel, the front knee is going ever so slightly forward, and then you're breathing into your nose, out through your mouth. One thing people do on this to look out for, and this is a really common mistake, is that people have a tendency to push their hips to the other side. So when we're in this position, what they'll end up doing is having their hips translate to the other side. We wanna make sure that that hip stays in line with the knee. And a good cue for that is making sure you're staying on your outside heel on that side. The second most common issue is people don't have the right exercise selection. They might be chasing sensation or a burn in the glutes, but actually a lot of those exercises that give that burn aren't actually efficient. There was some research done where they compared wide toes out squats and deadlifts to more toes straight ahead and hip width apart stances. What they found was the wider stances actually use less glutes and more adductors or inner thigh muscles to extend the hip, whereas the narrow stances have the inverse, so they use more glutes. But people feel their glutes when they have this really wide stance, but really what they're doing is placing the back of the pelvis in this position where it's already sort of closed off. So they have compression of the glute already and the glute is in a shortened position. So of course they're going to feel it, but that doesn't mean it's able to fully contract efficiently. That also feeds into the idea of chasing sensation or that burning feeling rather than just 
proper optimal exercise selection for the muscle group you're going for. Now, sensation is definitely not useless, and there are contexts in which it is more important, such as in more isolated exercises. You would certainly hope to feel your glutes working. However, when it comes to these multi-joint exercises like squats or deadlifts, you're probably not actually going to feel your glutes as much as some people on the internet might make you think you need to. This also goes hand in hand with how people wrap a band around their knees and push their knees out really far to feel their glutes work more. That's actually probably not doing what you think it is. It's not actually advantageous for getting that glute to contract. To keep your knees in line with your toes with a band around your knees, that can be a good teaching tool, but that doesn't mean that it's going to help your glutes grow more. That brings me to my third point, and that comes down to the actual execution of the lifts themselves. There's a couple of common myths I want to clear up here, but also give you some tips and cues for how you can optimize some of your execution on the common lifts that people go after when they're targeting their glutes. I talk about often how certain positions of the foot and certain references of the foot are lined up with certain joint actions at our hips and also certain musculature. For example, when we want to use our glutes during walking or running and we're propelling forward, that is that transition from mid to late stance. And I know we're talking about walking right here, but bear with me. Your glute muscles are intimately tied to the arch of your foot, particularly the ball of the big toe, because when we push off in walking and running, that arch is going to stretch out. And then as we transition to propulsion, that glute, especially in running, is going to allow us to push forward off of that big toe. So if the goal is to synchronize the position of the foot with the glute and to extend the hip, this is what we can do. So we're set up here with just a gentle hold of the rack right here, as little as we possibly need. And then we have the back knee underneath the back hip, weight in the opposite side of the foot that's forward. But about 90% of the weight is on the front leg and 10% in that kickstand in the back. So we're just gonna slightly turn the zipper towards the stance leg and then keeping that weight reaching for the inside edge of that front foot, Taylor's just gonna hinge back until she feels a little stretch in her back glute. And now this is how you get that hip extension. The only reason why you stand up, Taylor, is because I want you to push through the arch of your foot, not because you're trying to stand up using your back or extending your back. You wanna stand up and extend through pushing through the inside edge of the arch, through the big toe and inner heel right there, keeping the whole foot flat. That's how she's gonna get a lot of glute, less low back, and a little bit of upper hamstring too. And again, keeping the whole foot flat, not rolling excessively onto the inside of the foot, she's gonna push through that arch and stand up, fully extending her hip with a little hip tuck underneath her at the top, and she's gonna feel a lot of that glute. Exhaling as she comes up, inhaling as she goes down. There's this other idea of knees going in being bad for us and being bad for the knees and it's just generally not a good thing. And that's just not entirely the case. If the knees are going inwards to a relative extent, then it's either one of two things. Now this little opening of the back hips right here is associated with internal rotation of these bones right here and the femurs inwardly like that. So if you see internal rotation happening at the femur, the leg and the shin and the foot pronate, so the arch goes down a little bit, and the knees go in slightly, that's not really the end of the world. In fact, that could be good for getting your glute to activate. Sometimes people's knees go excessively in, and what that is is not necessarily the best thing because then you have the leg bone doing one thing, the shin doing the other, and oftentimes you see the ankle completely collapse into the floor, and that is usually a compensation to find internal rotation. I do use a knees in cue sometimes to get the glute to work. A great example of that would be a lateral lunge. One of the instances in which a knees in approach can be really helpful to get more glutes is when we do something like a lateral lunge here. So Taylor's got a weight in the opposite side of the foot she's stepping out with, which would be the right side, so the weight's in the left hand. And so she's gonna get that step out a little bit wider than hip width. And now what she's gonna do is reach that weight for the inside edge of her arch. And now the hip is going to go slightly outside the knee and the knee is actually going to be cued in a little bit. But really what that's doing is that keeps the knee in line with the second toe. So she can push through that foot, come back up and use her glute because we're creating that stretch at the bottom. If the knee travels too far out, she's going to go too far to the outside of her foot and her glute is going to be in more of a shortened position at that bottom position right there. So we wanna make sure the knee is cued to stay in as she goes down and that's going to help her open up that space and she should feel a little bit of inner thigh at the bottom position, but not a lot. So from a backside view, what we can see is the hip has gotta get outside of the knee. And we wanna make sure that that knee stays in line with the toes. So that's why that knee's end cue can be useful in the right context and in the right amount. So you got the hip slightly outside the knee, the back is nice and flat, 
and then that'll allow her to get that opening of the backside of the pelvis so she can close it with the glute coming up. 